Hello, good, good afternoon. Let me start with a question. Um, could you raise your hand if you notice that this screen is floating from time to time? Yeah, okay. I was already a bit afraid that it was my jet lag. Maybe raise your hand if you have a jet lag. Uh, that more or less settled it. Okay, it's not me. Great. Okay. Um, so I'm Martin Van Hoof. I'm going to talk a bit about spatial interaction models. Um, there's a whole family of these models out there. Um, but basically, if you reduce them to their essence, they're about um, predicting flows or interactions between different areas based on the characteristics of these areas and some distance measure. Now, this might seem very simple, right? But um, in the past, these models have been very useful for, for example, retail locations um, or urban planning. One of the interesting bits about CASA, the place where I work that has been promoted very well already here, is that the people who popularized these models um, are still working there. They popularized these models in the 60s and 70s, and this makes, well, actually it makes you wonder why they're still not retired. Um, but it also makes you wonder to which degree, why and how these models would still be relevant today. So let me try and, and raise three points to you today um, as to why I think these models are still relevant. Um, I know I'm preaching a bit to the choir here, but one of the, of the, of the obvious things is that the, the data is different today, right? What we see is that um, compared to before where these spatial interaction models would be used to fill in missing data that was not collected by surveys or census, nowadays there's this, this tendency towards using the spatial interaction models to understand large data sets. For example, this is one of the works I did with MIT and um, NYU, um, trying to use spatial interaction models to better understand the calling patterns um, in France um, between cities, actually between locations, right? So basically what we did is we, we used a lot of spatial interaction models to see whether we could capture the patterns in these calling data, and what we found is that actually calling in France and also in other cities and other countries in the world is not necessarily dependent on the continuous distance, but rather on a hierarchical distance. And you do know this effect from your own life. It means that you're more likely to call to a regional center which is a bit further away, or even a national center which is really far away, than you're likely to call to a similar center as you which is actually close nearby. So the neighbors you never speak to, really. Um, so this effect is actually captured by the spatial interaction models um, in this paper. If you're interested, just read it um, or come to me afterwards. Another thing that, that um, I think is, is adding to the relevance of spatial interaction models today is that we are now having the tools and the technology to actually run these models, um, or at least for a lot of people to run these models. And what you see in, in the academic world is that more and more researchers are um, starting to publish these, um, these tools, these frameworks to, um, to accompany their, their own research. For example, Taylor Ocean has this um, great Python library called, called SPINT, um, which actually allows you to, to do spatial interaction models. Now, opening up these kind of tools and, 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 and frameworks, I think is 100% laudable, but I have to admit that um, I'm not entirely convinced this is the best way to go. For the simple reason that these spatial interaction models are actually rather complex. They require quite some user decisions on the parameters, um, the, the performance indicators and the statistics need quite some interpretation from experts. And if you get them into these libraries, um, you automatically end up in this kind of, oh, I use this line of code and I set the default parameters and ta-da. We've all been doing this, um, me included, but, but there's a danger that we're not like, simplifying the models or simplifying on, or neglecting our understanding of the models, right? Um, so fairly spoken, I think academics like me we should try to reach out more and, and try to get this educational, sometimes criticism um, on how these models are being used um, by, by normal spatial data scientists and, and elaborate much more on this. We don't do this very well at the moment, but this is some, that's certainly something we can improve on in the future. Right? Um, a final point I'd like to raise is, and this is some of the work we're doing at CASA at the moment, some of the work I'm working on, is that I think we could even open up this kind of spatial interaction model, these kind of models compared with data and interpretation to a much wider audience than just spatial data scientists and other researchers. This is exact, essentially what we're trying to do in this project called Quant, um, which is uh, a web-based service where we um, try to visualize the effect of large infrastructure um, 
large infrastructure works on the mobility of people um, based on predictions from models that we run on existing data. Um, it's a web-based service. You can actually check it out. It's still in beta. But what is specific about it is that we try to um, uncover the entire complexity of these models, um, showing both the user decisions, um, the input data, and actually the, the interpretation that people could make of it. Um, just as an example, what you could do with Quant is you could implement a scenario for the UK where you look at Crossrail. Um, this is uh, an extension of the, of the metro, of the tube lines in London, which has already, already been built right now. You could just go into the model and, and then ask the, the Quant, okay, if this would, would happen based on the census data we have available, what do the models predict um, in terms of population change or um, trips that are improved um, or um, times of, of trips that are improved and so on. Um, just to give you a little hang of, of what we've been doing to actually push this thing further than just the space interaction models that live with these old, white, academic men um, to get it more out in the open. Um, more general, I think this is a bit of a tendency we see with, with the entire spatial data science field, right? That this combination of both data and understanding of models and insights um, are trying to be combined in, in, in several things. Um, they say I have to cut off because I only had five minutes and exactly that was my last slide. So thanks a lot for your attention. Thanks.